goodness. Oh my goodness. It's another episode. In HD. Wow. My God, we have an amazing show today. Episode 19. This is going to blow your mind. We have Zadi and Steve from Epic Foo in the studio live here now in the moment, in the present. We got Brian Rothy with some crazy ass sunglasses. And it's just going to be a, a damn good time. So before uh, I say anything else, let's do it. E got us live. Whoop, whoop. So this is our own title sequence. You can't really hear the music, but there's music there. <laughs> and it's really fun. It's really fun music. Floating circles. Episode 19. Okay, come on. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whoop whoop. Choo choo. So uh, we got Zadi and Steve in that in that particular order with us. Always. Yeah. Always. Uh-huh. Always. If, uh, you know, if you know it's good for you. Yeah. Oh, how, how does that feel? You just raise the hand sometimes, and you're just like. Yeah, no, got... he, he pushes me. Yeah. Oh no. That's been in the news, you <laughs> yeah. know. I open doors. You are a UFC I fighter. Open doors. What? And then pushes. No, yeah. I, I open doors. You throw her in a bathtub. Take, just yeah. <laughs> woman, no, no, woman no. get online. I, I take my jacket off. I put it across puddles. Right. I open doors. You're a romantic. I pull out chairs. Before, you know, right and then before you I'm push about her. to sit. Right? And then I, just, I, get, I, I yell. I yell a little bit. You're a screamer. Yeah, a like bit. Scott Rudin. That's good. <laughs> he yells a lot. He yells a lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> in, on the inside. <laughs> So mm-hmm. ulcer is building I, I up. Keep it. I keep it. So it's a, a fun day, Brian. How are you doing today? Where, where are you at? Yeah, I'm how good. Uh, you oh, know, actually, Mark, I got, we a got little, our wires crossed. <laughs> I got a little confused today because I thought that we were all supposed to meet at the Epic Foo Studio. That's so, a beautiful uh, new studio in Hollywood. So it's a good looking studio. Downtown, downtown, downtown. So, baby. Downtown. I'm sorry I missed yeah. you guys, but I was able to put everything together and be able to broadcast from uh from here so those are beautiful sunglasses by the way too i am thanks <laughs> things will be great when you're downtown right they <laughs> yeah they are. Uh-huh. this is like the sunglasses apocalypse right oh now. yeah man we usually reserve these sunglasses for the b-side live which is thursday at 9 p.m but you guys are special guests and i was like we need we need to break out some sunglasses for you folks. Now these are pretty cool. And I like how you went double sunglasses. I had to. I'm, I need a third really so I can cover my mouth. But uh-huh. this will do for now. Nice. You know, so so epic foo. What is epic foo? Yeah, we've been on on since 2006. Does anyone really know? Does, yeah, I don't think really anybody is. actually ever. Knew. Right. And does foo stand for anything? The F U stand for anything? It's like a kung fu kick to the groin. I see. I don't All right. Know. Oh, it's more than that. It's got. So, what is Epic Foo? So what is Epic Foo? Epic Foo, first of all, is a show that right now is on an irregular schedule. But when we're on our usual schedule, it's five to seven minutes a week of covering emerging cultures. So that's independent artists, independent bands, uh, new innovations in tech, anyone or anything who is doing things using technology to circumvent traditional ways of thinking. And when you say independent. Um, does, does that mean it's a wave? Like if IBM was doing something innovative, would you cover that? Or is it more towards really strictly independence? I think we're open to anybody yeah. who's doing amazing things. We, we actually we covered to IBM's master yeah. inventor. We did. So, he, and, he was incredible. And uh, it's just anybody who's kind of who's doing innovative things. Um, mm-hmm. It's just kind of uh, whatever blows your mind. What, yeah. People that are passionate. I love blowing people's minds. I know. Don't, isn't it fun? You just know? going like, I'm going to blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's best when you don't even expect it you're just i know <laughs> i know totally like so now you're the face of epic foo and uh what roles do you do you guys play uh well I, on on air i don't want to talk about role playing at all uh, that's what we were gonna uh, go for actually but actually yeah, what are the role tell me what you got how you role play <laughs> yeah. well a lot of times you know zadi gets upset and she'll smash something so i'm there to sweep up and uh-huh. I pick up, and there's crazy glue, and I put the like the dishes and cups back together. And people don't know about Zadi's rage issues. Uh-huh. <laughs> she keeps it pretty well masked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I like the way I enunciate masked. Masked. Yeah. Too. So are you encouraging anger management classes? Or? No, no, we just let it go. Because then what we do is we channel that into right. the show. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. A lot of bickering behind the scenes. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. So it's like creative therapy. <laughs> <laughs> really I love is. creative therapy, you know, because... You know, creating art is turning the pain of the past into the future tense of joy, isn't it? 
Yeah, I, I, you know, wow, I We've don't even understand. <laughs> I that's a that's a David Melchism. <laughs> David Melchism. Um, so, so seriously, you're you're the host, and do you direct? Or are you producing? Are you lining up interviews? Are you uh, napping yeah. on the couch? Are you letting the woman do all the work? What's what's going on? I'm no dummy, you know. I, mean? <laughs> I, I married above my station. I know oh, this. Boy. And so, you know, we make a great team. No, I mean, we do everything. I mean, uh, yes, I, I do the directing, and uh, we both produce the show, and um, we both write it. Although I probably write a little bit more than you do, yeah. and. Um, and Zadia actually is the editor, so she's not just the host. I mean, she's an amazing editor. Has edited over a hundred episodes of the show. Wow! Um, yeah, that's something that always Final Cut. Final Cut Pro. Nice. That's something that always pisses me off. People are like, "You're the yeah. face of the show. You're the." I'm like, "No, mm -hmm. no I, there's a lot more to it. It's it's the face and the whole freaking body. <laughs> it's every, It's not just the face. It's the whole package. Right, but that's, I think that that's a stigma that women have online. I think you see them on camera and you think, well, that that's all they do. When there's so much more to actually creating a show online. Have you seen the Whatever Hollywood Girls? The Whatever. I have heard of it. Yeah, I, they, I think I saw an episode, one episode of it. They're very spunky and mm -hmm. fun, and they also shoot, edit, do all their own yeah. stuff. So that's that's nice to see. You know. Mm -hmm. It does make it. E I mean, I think people do like to watch women more than you know right. nerdy, nebbish Jewish guys. <laughs> but that's why I'm compensating with the sunglasses. That's always hot, though. That's yeah, always it's good. Hot? Yeah. All right, good. That's good. <laughs> I'd say let's. We we have a, a little reel to show. So if people aren't familiar with epic, I don't know how they couldn't be mm. fucking retards if they're not. So I, you might as well just go throw yourself off a building right now if you haven't mm. heard of it. No, 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 don't, uh, no, do, that. don't do that. Right, Brian. Yeah, don't do that. We're gonna go. Don't do that. Okay, so let's let's play uh, this uh, this reel, and we'll come back and we'll talk. We'll talk about it. Hey guys, I'm Zadi, and this is Epic Food. This is Epic Food. This is Epic Food. Yeah. <laughs> Has your internet been flaky this week? Because the web is under attack. Google would manage all the data, all the power, all the energy. A recent Atlantic article by Nick Carr asks if our reliance on Google is making us stupid. Sorry, what was I saying? This week we're going gaga for Twitter. Twitter? 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 This is Twitter. Wait, you're on Twitter, right? The long-awaited Guitar Hero 3 came out for all three systems this week. Sweet. 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 These guys glide along cliff edges and down mountainsides like freaking Superman. They used high-end 3D scanners to capture Tom York's face. That's a freaking Burger cool. A Burger King employee <laughs> bathing at work. I bet the camera person was all like, this is going to be huge on YouTube. And guess what? It was. And guess what? You're all fired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lou Bowen is a Chinese artist specializing in optical illusion. Thanks to their sheer size, we're forced to look at That's all the cool. subtle nuances we might otherwise overlook. He's been Whoa. part of some famous graffiti crew. Steampunk meets Isaac Asimov. We're all gonna be living in the cloud, man. All pixelated and shit. <laughs> yeah, mofo. That's a good. That's a good quote. These are all the videos that we feature. Mm -hmm. I love this song. It's very uplifting. That's German. <laughs> I met up with Raul, but I don't really get the whole thing. Hey, Zadi. Hey, is it true that you're in hiding? Who are you? It goes by the name Multidog. Cool. That's so soon. Damn. There he is, Steve Wolf. Today, it's Rick Ray. He's very People integral. People willing to just do a little bit of research in someone community. else's culture to see well, why. Well, they speak their opinion, but not necessarily listen to someone else. I'm trying World of Warcraft right now, and I'm hoping it doesn't become an addiction. Cool. The revolution will be online. <laughs> Everything that happens makes me just more excited about cities and You know she's faking that accent. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about being anointed the godfather of nerd for a caffeinated drink that helps double ships up no three hundred and fifty percent stronger than the Dude, how does he oh, see? <laughs> He's become a really good friend of ours now. He's cool. <laughs> This is all sort of like grassroots, sort of get the buzz out, get the knowledge out. This generation is telling stories She's differently. Cool. This is She's about amazing. true justice in the international way. So cool. That's scary. 
the future always is. <laughs> that sums it up. That's that's pretty good. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> kind of seeing that makes you. That was awesome. Did now? Did you cut that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She surely did. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> I'm going sans going sunglasses. Okay, sans. Yeah. sans yeah. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Ooh, it's like the sun is oh. actually. Oh. <laughs> so well, I, thank I you to orange e guiders branded cup. Mm. Yeah. Smooth. I put all the money into cups. We made four million. <laughs> I only, I, put, I said all put put everything into cups. Mm -hmm. That was smart. Yeah. yeah, that was smart. Then I went to Costco and they had the same freaking thing. I was like, they beat me to it. Now that decision was at least as smart as going into a web video. So. Yeah. yeah. You have no idea how I'm rolling in it. So rich right now. Oh my God. Do you hear the cash rich? Yeah. Cha -ching, cha -ching. yeah. Every Does second that, that goes by. So how do you guys make it in this world? Do you do you have uh, day jobs? Are you are you able to cover your costs and pay, uh, you know, rent or for your house or how do you do it? Um, for the first nine months when we first started, we had day jobs. We uh, had come from New York and literally, Steve, you were working as creative director for an a interactive company from New York and I was working as a freelance art director. Um, so that's how we were making our money and literally when the day would end, we would start working on uh, the show and we would end at like four, five in the morning. Then we'd go to sleep and then wake up at like seven. For months and months and months. So you're the corporate guy and you're more the creative. Yes. Yeah, I see. Well, no, he's very creative. creative? But I went to a, a school for painting. But he went, yeah, he uh, went. Fine, where, art, fine art background. Where's your, where'd you go? Uh, Pratt Institute. Oh, in Pratt. Brooklyn. Yeah. 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 And, uh, great neighborhood. That was a great neighborhood back in the early oh, 90s. Oh, man, in the early 90s. Oh, that was great. <laughs> it was a, you know, Myrtle Avenue runs behind Pratt. We used yeah. to call it, well, I didn't, but the kids who went to Pratt called it Murder Avenue. Yeah. And then there was Hall Street, which was Hell Street. So, yeah, yeah but it's changed quite a bit. Well, I'm awesome. glad you made it through with that program. I, I loved it. It was awesome. That's awesome. They have a good architecture program there they as well. They have a great architecture program. So... I don't know. Is this is it a secret that you guys are married? Is it, do people know that? Is that is that well known? Yeah, well, it's not a no secret. secret. It's just that let's I, see the ring. No secret. Yeah, do you have, do you <laughs> have a wedding ring he too? Let's see the ring. Let's see the ring. Oh, your yeah. ring. Oh, yeah. actually, this ring. is the, I put it on the wrong finger because right. that's how we do things. I think he, I think he means the rock. <laughs> I don't know why. He wants to see The Rock. Yeah, He's see, making we'll judgment see. here, you know? Uh -huh. Not oh, bad. This is actually, Not, this was my grandmother's This is his grandmother's ring. ring. It's a beautiful ring. Which means a lot. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that looks like a nice, like, 1.6, like, VS2 kind of G clarity. Well, Cubic you know, zirconia all, all the, the way. It's all about the, the four C's, right? Co right? Color, clarity, and carrot. Right? So you learn all these things, right? You have to. So when you guys met, were you, uh, how far along before Epic Food did oh. So how long have you guys been married? Give me give me a little backstory. All right, uh -huh. little backstory. Actually, we go back a long way. We were way. teenagers. We were so teenagers. We were uh -huh. oh my God. A long way. Uh, and that's awesome, guys. Uh -huh. I thought you were going to say that was awful. You're like, <laughs> oh, that's oh, awesome, that's awesome. Awful. We were teenagers. She was 18 and I was 19. Yeah. And then we were introduced by a mutual front, friend and... Um, <laughs> Frond. Frond has <laughs> introduced you. For, and for the most part, I mean, we've been together ever since. Yeah. yeah. Love at first sight? L yeah, I think, well, I mean, to some extent. Yeah. I mean, it took a while. Took we were young, yeah, so yeah. it's like... And we broke up a couple of times in between. Ooh, yeah. That makes it more passionate, though. <laughs> and how long were the distances uh, between? Um, the breakups? Yeah. Uh, the only real lengthy breakup was like a year and a half when we were actually hung out every day anyway. We were still really <laughs> close friends. Mm -hmm. I don't so. recommend that to anyone yeah. out there. Yeah. But that's awesome. So you guys have been together since you were 18, 19. Mm -hmm. So you're 22, 23 now. Yeah, right. yeah. So it's been Absolutely. about five years. Kids? Do we have kids? No. No kids? Uh, I have four. Um, <laughs> Zadi doesn't have any. So are you waiting for the web video thing to really take <laughs> off to, before you're like, all right, now we can have kids? No, no, I believe in spreading my seed as widely as possible. I'm letting him do his thing. Yeah, and, well, uh, a certain yeah. type of marriage that works for us. I'm not saying it's for everyone. <laughs> okay, so getting back to the role play. Tell me more about that then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, so, uh, so you guys met, and when did it become clear that you guys wanted to try your hand at creating a, original content and start this show? It's funny. Uh, when we met, uh, Steve's painter uh, I was working in theater um, and we and then during my day job I was working in publishing as an art director and so when we met we were really creative and we were always kind of thinking up ideas and um, writing screenplays and 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 you were really involved in technology so we were always like we should all bring the, all of this together it just makes perfect sense this is where everything is going we didn't do anything about that for years we were just it was always kind of like this thought we had we were like 
we have so many kind of in-house talents that we can bring together and um, when we have the opportunity. Yeah, well, you're leaving out like a couple of huge parts, yeah. which is that like... <laughs> uh, one, of the, Zaddy, one of those huge parts. Well, Zadi was involved in the early days of video blogging, mm -hmm. in this generation of video blogging, which is... Uh, what like years are those? 2004. 2004. Mm -hmm. um, part of the Yahoo video blogging group and some of the core people that came out of that, like Tim Street and Steve Garfield and Andrew Barron and Amanda Congdon. Uh, and some people who are still hanging in there, and all the blip people were also part of those right. days too. Mm -hmm. so YouTube was not in existence yet. No, yep. YouTube did no. not exist, and Zadi was a correspondent for Rocket Boom when we moved to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and I was actually working as a screenwriter when we moved out here. Um, and that it was like a terrible Hollywood experience for me, and when I was seeing what was happening with online video, right. and what was happening with Rocket Boom specifically, right. we were both like, why don't we just say screw this and, and make our own thing? Except uh, I remember when I used to watch, <laughs> I spent a lot of time watching videos online, right. and you're like, well, stop watching all those videos. Well, you're you're soaking it in. Videos. You're soaking she it. Obsessed. I was obsessed. Like, well, like with what? Like the curl, the girls at cat fighting at the schoolyard. No, with no, just no, the creation no. of video. Just being able, yeah, being able to see what someone in Japan was doing, mm -hmm. or that's awesome. It's just you know, drinking coffee. Something as simple I as love that, coffee. right? Is, is, you yeah. need like a you know, a good drinking coffee drinking video. What was that owl? <laughs> what's the owl sensation thing that's been going on for about a year? On Ustream, you know, a guy, a farmer, set up a cam. The cam owl cam? Yeah, the owl cam. I haven't seen that. And they, they've been laying the egg, the, the owl laid the eggs, and people really? just check in. Oh, no, and I haven't seen See seen. how the babies are doing. Is that like the puppy cam? Yeah. yeah. Shiba Inu, right? Yeah, huh? the puppy cam, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On Ustream, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, no, but Slow Loris videos I like, you know. Slow Loris, right? Yeah, the little animals that you tickle and stuff, <laughs> and they look like <laughs> little lemurs, but they're not lemurs. They're called Slow Lorises. I love them. Uh, no, I mean, those days it was people really just getting to know each other and making friends. And then there yep. was the first, there was an event called VloggerCon in 2005. Where right. It was weird because there were people from all over the country and other countries, and everybody felt like they knew each other. And that was in San Francisco that that took well, place. Well, that was the second one. The first oh, one the first was in, one's in New, York. New York, right. Yeah. And it was during a snowstorm. Yeah, we were actually in the middle of moving right. to California at that time. And uh, so how do you find the community, the creative communities in both cities? Do you, are you enjoying LA? Are you, are you building a, a community here? It's different. I mean, I think that we, I li I'd like to be your friend. <laughs> you are our friend. Are I'd like to be. I your thought we were friend. already friends. No, but like real, like not virtual, like Twitter friends, but like. So you're not like, going to pay us for being here? <laughs> <laughs> razor. That kid's got razor wit. Razor wit. So you were saying. No, maybe when you have kids, we'll become friends, and then we could have our kids hang out. Uh -huh. right. No, I'm kidding. I kid. I kid. I have four. I told you that. Oh, right. You don't know any other names, though. I don't see, see them. Uh, you know. That's awesome, dude. Oh, what video takes up letters. a lot of time. So, you know? so in 2005, you were you you were went to this uh, convention, and then you decided in 2006 to actually start doing it yourselves. And yeah, I mean, I think we we um we saw the community and really wanted to be part of it, and um. Even when you ask about the communities, we, there are different. It's it's weird because we were talking about this recently. How we kind of see things uh, evolving and kind of s circling around into the same way. It's like we see the YouTube community now, and there's very much like our, you know, the very early video community was, where it's like you know yeah. you just kind of talk to each other, sit, you know, mm -hmm. and create Except your own thing. Millions and millions Except of right, watching. it's it's so changed. It's, like, it's just right. gone, you know, like exponentially. Long. And now we have a live element on too, where you yeah. could you, you could interact and. You know, it could be so immediate, and, and the price is like nothing. Right. And while we're talking about that, we should mention our sponsors. Yeah. Yay right? Why not? for sponsors. Yay, Yay for sponsors, sponsors, actually. Yes, absolutely. First, I'd like to thank Blue Microphones. This is a pretty mic. This Isn't a pretty, it pretty? pretty rocking looking mic. It's kind of uh, has a nice retro. It's a retro futuristic vibe. I love the screen. Vibe. I love that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Blue. <laughs> We'd like to uh, thank Big Gravity for streaming services. Thank you, Big Gravity. Thank you, Big Gravity. Live stream. Mm -hmm. And Wirecast, which is providing our switching software, nice. which is allowing Brian to drive and do what he does. Yeah, that's right. How's that lack of hair working out for you? <laughs> huh? It's really good, Mark. Yeah, good. Got a haircut last night. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. You do that you yourself? See, I did. I do it myself every time. Yeah. It's really easy. You know, it's, it's a good solution. Economical. Well, economical takes 20 minutes. Well, Don't have to leave home. The bus to Camp Pendleton's Simple. leaving at five, so we got to just make sure. <laughs> well, I'm going to be on it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Good. All I right. Gotta, we got to wrap this up. So. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> All right. So, marriage, creativity. You know, do you find? I mean, that must be a great uh, collaboration. You talk about collaboration. I mean, your your lives are you know collaborating in many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, 
can you talk about what that what that life is like? Is it? I don't think it's for everyone. Yeah. I think you have to have a pretty unique partnership because it just happens to work out that we fill out each other's shortcomings like really p beautifully. So, you know, where where Zadi has like the heart and soul of everything and is really in touch with what's happening in the online world and she finds all this amazing material and I'm more in touch with like executing and making sure things get done the way they, they need to get done and everything so we're able to really complement each other that way. That's great and you guys recently moved into a new studio? We did we moved to downtown Los Angeles and uh, that was in January so it's been a couple months we've been adjusting it's been great actually because the community down there is yeah. so creative. They're is downtown sponsoring you? No, I know we always uh, mention downtown. I think Are they that <laughs> downtown Los Angeles sponsor. I think we want people to move downtown. We, we <laughs> walk downtown all the time. Yeah. It's um, scary down here. Please come downtown. It's really not. That's the thing. It's like I think downtown, especially for longtime Angelinos, it gets such a bad rap. But now there's so much. It's a very slow process of gentrification. But mm -hmm. I mean, we have this amazing loft space with like beautiful bathroom and a beautiful kitchen and mm -hmm. you know concrete floors and, and I a love concrete corner view. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's like, it, it's amazing. And it's historic building. And then the building is full of creative people. When we bump into people in the hallway, they're like, Epic Foo! You know, they know That's the great. Show. People across the street from us. So, how close are you to Six and San Pedro? Because that's oh. where I go to get my, my heroin. Oh, you're, you're, that's, really that's close. a better crack spot. <laughs> really? Be well, no, that, that, yeah, no, that's still a, a, a really bad area. Are you close to there? Uh, we're a few blocks away from that. Okay, so you're safe. It's That's really a few blocks. not bad. I no, think okay, people kind of, I'm, you know, I'm from the South Bronx, so when people say bad, I'm like, you can still it's walk relative. down the street. Yeah, buildings people, are not on fire. No, people are not coming up to you and, There's you know, no trying. Gunfights in no, the street, there really is. Right. I think it's more people are spooked because there is a really big homeless population down yeah. there. And yeah. I think Los Angeles is trying to figure out how to handle that. Yeah, my wife actually works at the jail at Parker Center, so she sees all the mm -hmm. clientele there and tries okay. to help them out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's an area that is definitely in transition and needs help, but there's there's a pulse down there. I mean, if you go down for Art Walk or something, yeah, it's and, great. and you look at what's going on down there, it'll it'll blow your mind because the last few months, it's just, the, the crowds are huge. It's like New York City down there during those days. So do you have the New York-LA debate, or do you feel LA is your home now and you're going you're gonna to stick it out? Um, it's it's interesting. We always, I think until recently, uh, Steve definitely more than I uh, always wanted to move back to New York. Um, pussy. What a pussy. <laughs> can't stick it out? Sunshine's no, getting you I down? Think, I think it's that, that energy of New York. You can't really compare it to anything I, else. I love it. I, LA is really nice. Like, if you're, it, we're, we're all kind of struggling through this time, you know, right. with online video and trying to figure out what we're going to do. LA is a great place to be struggling yeah. because it's beautiful all the time. And there are, like, we have so many more friends here than we did when mm -hmm. we were in New York. Which so is funny because all, of, all of our New York here. friends were like, you're going to hate the people in L.A. They're yeah. all flaky. They're, they're all from New awful. York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. the thing. Like the first bunch of people we met when we moved out here were all from Brooklyn. That's yeah. True. And we're like, yeah. this is Brooklyn weird. people like to fuck things up. Remember when they had to get out of the Gaza Strip? <laughs> Remember the Gaza Strip, right? And, and the settlers wouldn't leave? And that, they were all people from Brooklyn. That is, they were all hardcore Brooklyn people. Like, this is our hometown. We're not leaving here. This is we came here. This is uh, this is our land. And you're like, dude, you're from Flatbush. What are you talking about? You just moved to Israel like a year ago. Yeah, my friend from Israel always complains about Americans coming to Israel and thinking that, that we could do the same thing in Israel that uh, we do here in America. We just can't. So yeah, your enemies are are a hundred yards. It away. don't work like that here. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they have rocket launchers. Although I'm impressed with the analogy between Brooklynites in L.A. and Brooklynites in Gaza. Yeah, you don't get they're hardcore. Yeah. I've never heard that before. Yeah, it's an SAT analogy question. <laughs> 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 so, um, what else? What else should we talk about? What else? Tell me, tell me more. I love you kids. You kids are great. <laughs> you kids got chutzpah. Well, I love it. <laughs> so the studio downtown, it's working out. Well, uh, how, how long have you been in there? Uh, since uh, January, so we are getting accustomed now, and since this, the the show has been in, in a regular schedule, we mm -hmm. are coming back with one on hacking. We have, yeah, yeah we, we, have we went to Crash Space LA, LA right. which is founded by Sean Bonner, who's mm -hmm. also the founder of Netblogs, right. and it's this incredible group of people who love to get together and make machines and computer parts do things that they weren't meant to do, and 
rearrange things and make them better. It's it really that's the space you're in. That's the building. Or? No, 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 that, no, this is where we in went. Culver City. Right. Oh, cool. Uh, so we went and interviewed them and talked to them and checked out what they were doing, and, and we have to cut that and get that up. Mm -hmm. And we might be doing something with the MacGruber movie. So we're waiting for confirmation oh, on that. So branded integration? No, no, like yeah. an interview with Will Forte, possibly. Oh, good. Like we're waiting for final confirmation on that, but it looks pretty good. Now, you mentioned there's some something in a few weeks that you, that's going to be a big uh, thing. That yeah, maybe? you know, you, can you, want, you wanted to have us come in today, so I we do. can't talk about yeah. that. I, no. Nothing, nothing. You, not even you, a little. You can hang that matzo ball out there if you want, but we can't take a bite. No? Okay. <laughs> I love that. That's a good analogy. <laughs> All right, well, cool. So, and uh, do you live in your workspace as well? Is your studio yeah. also kind of? We do. Yeah, I should have yeah. done that, but, uh, you know, having a two and a half year old, she just takes over the entire apartment. Yeah, Absolutely. that's good. Well, if you're like me, you got four kids, you just send them off somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I just rented another, another whole studio in the next building over, just because I'm rolling in the dough from the online video. I mean, it's just pouring in. Uh -huh. I mean, don't you find it so, what an easy business model. Yeah, I mean, I, I burn it. Just I, put up the Google ads, boom. When, when there's no room left in the safety deposit box, I just burn whatever's left over. Well, I, I think that this comes back to, to the talk and the self-deprecation, right? That, that all, all of us online video people folk have. Is that, Leo's is that doing well. <laughs> no, Leo's no, doing just, well. Leo is doing well. People, he, well he's are, been, people are doing well. People like, are people doing well. People are making a living in this whole yes. thing. Like, we've been extremely lucky in the course of our online video career to make our living doing it it's an incredibly rare thing but people are doing it and mazel you know people there will be more and more of it. Yeah. i mean you were you were talking about we were you were asking earlier how we went from independent to what we're doing now and it's like literally the first nine months building an audience and mm -hmm. then figuring out a partnership. We were with Next New Networks for a year, and then we uh, went with Revision 3 for a time, and then we went independent. But in that time, going back and independent, uh, after all that time to independent, when the first nine months are very different things because right. we had all this experience and you know all this uh, all these episodes behind us, and so we had a lot more to kind of show people. And I noticed that in your reel, like uh, the tags, Revision 3 and, and things like that. And um, so it started with Next New Networks mm -hmm. and Revision 3. And mm -hmm. were the decisions more like you just wanted more control or was it um, you were growing out of the relationship? What, what was the you know catalyst for you know one to the other to the finally going independent? So we had a year contract with Next New Networks, and then once that year was up, uh, we definitely were thinking about well, we want to grow our in internally. Like, how do we grow? To get an editor? Actually, although I edited the first hundred episodes, we brought in Mike Ames, who was an amazing editor for us, and he edited about fifty or no, uh, mm, 30, thirty something. Or so, 30 um, or more. And that was great. So thinking about, well, how do we grow as a business? So mm -hmm. um, Revision 3 let us do that for, so we were th with them for three months. I love Zadi. She's like, she's mm -hmm. so, she's so like, <laughs> she makes everything so, so nice. <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> No, well, no, okay, well, we were with them for about three months. Tim Shea, I punched Tim Shea in the no, face. No, we actually did. He's awesome. Okay. Yeah, he's awesome guy. Awesome. And Next New Networks was an incredible partnership yeah. for us. We benefited tremendously. I strangled Ryan Vance. That's the one then, thing The one thing we've learned, <laughs> never burn your bridges, no, no matter yeah, where. No. You know, they're they're you have to burn people. them and then piss on the ashes. <laughs> so, so That's how you do it. With, with That's next, New York style. With, with you burn the bridges, then you piss on the ashes. So with Next New Networks, we were doing... I agree, you don't burn bridges. I was just being silly. You don't burn bridges. You burn all your bridges. <laughs> With Next New, we were doing like 20, 20 to 50,000 views per episode on our own. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with our, in our year with Next New Networks, by the end of that year, we were doing two to three million views a month. So they were an incredibly great they partner were. for yeah. us. I think what happened was is that like we really wanted to expand and try things in other media, and we had a TV offer on the table, and we couldn't quite come to an agreement about what to do with that. Revision 3 didn't care about any of that. And... Um, so, and we were able to expand the team and also do more programming on the web and things like that. So it was, at that time, it was a better fit. And then the economy happened, and, and then, then the they cut back. Collapsed. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. cut a couple of their shows, and then we went back to being independent. And so, but then that time, we had all of our shows kind of as a back catalog, and we're able to kind of grow from there. Whether, you know, even when people ask us now, well, you're not doing this show, are, are you doing, what, what else are you doing? We, we have other projects in the work, so we are either working, we've worked with PBS, and we've worked with, um, Blip on a couple of projects, mm -hmm. um, so we, we are television always television commercials, yeah. and right? Production stuff. That's great. So, 
you know, there's Epic Food, but then there's also right. people could, you, you know, work with you guys for their own brand, for their own projects and things like right. that. So there's a path out there for people that are, you yeah. know, they're like, oh, what do I do? I mean, yeah. just keep on working on what you're... You got to keep knocking keep on the door. Yeah, like, absolutely. we're always out there pitching stuff, too, and coming up with ideas for new shows and, find you know, trying to find ways to fund them ourselves. I mean, that's really right. the, the main thing that I think we always try to impress upon people is that there's nothing wrong with taking your idea, selling it, and then going on and doing that type of thing, like making a show. But I, I really believe that the, the next generation of media creators needs to have more control over their future. Right. And there are maybe some other ways to do things than just outright selling your ideas to, whether it's a digital studio or a traditional studio, and kind of being at their mercy for whether or not you continue to work on it or not, yeah. or how they distribute it, or what they do with it. Whereas... I think producers now really need to have much more knowledge about how to do these things and take more control themselves. There's an right. independent way of, of doing media, and right. I, it's really important, I think, that we all try to foster that. Yeah. We, yeah. we also have this, um, <laughs> this weekly, or not weekly, occasional podcast that we do. Yeah. Semi-regular. New, new, semi-regular. Yeah. New Mediocracy, where we talk a lot about that. We kind of just get content creators. And yeah. I think it's all in the content, right? I mean, if you're making shitty content, people are not going to be interested. If you're making great content... And you know, you know, we have to. I mean, look at television as the as the bar in a way because people feel you know, even though they're paying a cable bill or whatever, mm -hmm. they feel like they could watch Jack Bauer for free. They're not getting charged per show or anything like that. So I mean, we have to rise to a certain level of production, unless you know the theme of or whatever it wants mm -hmm. it to be gritty and fretable or fret fretized, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, don't you agree with that, that the content really has to come through? It's not just about having a great idea or whatever. It's, it's all about execution. It is about execution. I think it's also um, what we try to, what we always talk about is also experimenting, not being afraid to experiment, especially online. I think uh, a lot of people, especially independent filmmakers here in Los Angeles, when we first got here and telling people about, you know, how to, how to put a, a video online, right. as simple as that, they were just kind of like, oh, you know, the online where I, I just want to get to the next level. I want to get to television. I right. want to make a film. But experiment with the medium, experiment with the tools, figure out ways to be interactive, figure out ways to tell a, a story in a different way. And so these are the things that I think that we really need to be practicing right now as opposed to just saying, well, I just want to be a, you know, I just want to put a, make a film. And that's cool. That's cool. There's nothing right. wrong with that. But there traditionally has been a huge disconnect between right. Hollywood, people that are making films with uh, the online mm -hmm. community. I think that's starting to blur. I guess Jason Pollock yeah. is heavy on Twitter, and right. so those people are starting to get it. So, you know, I think it's our, our jobs to kind of bring them in, into the community, right? I yeah. mean, that's what that's what we're out to yeah. do. And techies and, and uh, filmmakers yeah. need to get together a lot more. Because we both appreciate each other, you know, but uh, I don't think we communicate as much as we should. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's not just being in the community, but those who take the time to really understand the media and kind of start realizing how this is different and, and in a lot of ways better than something like television because there are things that you cannot possibly do on television no. but, but you can do online and starting to explore those things that actually make the web different and special that's what's going to advance this whole industry in my in my opinion it's not the replicating like short tv shows and, I agree. And, and worrying about things that that right now is a bridge to where we'll ultimately get to yeah. and i certainly applaud the people who have had success doing that they're friends of ours and we wish them the best but I think in my yeah, good mind, luck with that. when I think five or ten years down the road, I think about truly interactive shows, things that really make the audience a creative partner. Don't you think Boxy is pretty cool? I think Boxy is awesome. Yeah. That's the future, right? Don't you think every television is going to look like that in five years? I hope it will. I mean, I hope some variant of that will exist for everyone. So yeah. that there's a wider array of choices, yeah. Like in our building where we moved downtown, one of the bad things is that uh, we have no choice but to use AT&T's home entertainment services. There's n literally no other service available to us. Yeah. So we can't do anything. That I we could tell you some AT&T stories about this office. Mm. That it's, just there, it. it's just crushing. It's kind of like a microcosm of just even what's happening with net neutrality and the internet. Like it's really crushing. people should really be aware of what's going on and, and the yeah. platform that they work on and why the web and keeping it open is so important, especially to independent creators. Do you get UVerse? We get we we, we are sup we we're supposed to provisioned right whatever that means maybe we'll get it in five years who the hell knows but it's right. uh, it's just straight DSL the yeah. fastest we can get is seven sixty eight kbps who's right. your cable provider like you, you well AT and T controls the building Eight, so we have to use them for phones internet cable everything can and we have no, literally no other options hey AT and T leave them alone okay <laughs> let them get time more give them some options. 
It's oh. really the building's fault. They have you yeah. by the balls. Right. Yeah. I could show you a freaking router I have in the other room. <laughs> that never The T1 never ended up working. Mm. Mm. No. That's, uh, we actually had that problem. Um, oh, we went through three we different routers. We went through routers three different routers. And AT&T sent the wrong technician. He, he sent the wrong guy. Oh, my he God. Said, and he's just like, I don't know why, why Let's I'm do here. a whole separate show about a... Uh, AT&T Kvetch show. Yeah, right. Just Kvetching about AT&T. Although, one, well, I'll give AT&T some kudos for something, too, because I don't want to just shit all over them. They, they, they locked up they, I, iPhone pretty good. They, they sponsored a show. <laughs> yeah, they locked up the iPhone. They sponsored a show called Fanboy Funhouse on Crave Online. I just directed five or six episodes of the show. Basically, no questions asked. Do whatever you want to do. You know, we don't have to do product integration. Mm -hmm. It's for pretty good money. Mm -hmm. And at the end, all you have to do is show the sponsored by AT&T plate. So we really mm -hmm. appreciated that. Right. No questions asked because they have no idea what question to even ask you. That <laughs> they may even be. have no I'm, idea. I'm going to stick with the positive. <laughs> no, no. That's great. I love, oh, it's so amazing what they're doing with, with the world. <laughs> so, you know, I, I could sit and talk and we could just kibitz forever. We could just talk and talk. But let's wrap the show up and we'll have you guys back and... You know, we'll hang out. Maybe you come to the B-Side Live, and we are friends. In a couple of weeks. Let's end with a group hug. Yeah. Come on. Group, group hug. hug. Come in. Come in here. Get your hands <laughs> off come my on. wife. Okay. I'm like, uh, okay. uh. Hey, uh, you don't got such a bad wife over there. No, she's not. I'm married. I'm married. Right. To, check this out. That's real. That's, that's freaking platinum. That's not just to pick that's up the ladies. That's platinum. That's just not hmm? just to pick up the ladies. No. Yeah. They oh. go right after. Oh, you're married? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, because what I thought your thing you told me was that when you go to bars and you have that on, you're like, well, I'm having yeah. a rough time right now. <laughs> right. You do the whole puppy dog thing. Right. She no. doesn't do these things. Uh, no. Oh. Yeah. No, my wife's great. She, She's in jail right now. Nice. You know? Is that the baby? You called the baby jail? Right. So. <laughs> she's jail bait. Uh, no, but she's really in jail. And what's funny is her day is like I can never have a worse day. I come back, oh, the internet went down for two hours. and She's like, I saw a guy that swallowed his glass eye mm -hmm. and then shat it out and put it back in his eye, and we had to send him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like in, in, you win. I can't beat that. Yeah. That, that's a rougher day. Me and my internet was down for two hours. Yeah. I think we need to put everything mm -hmm. in perspective. But I'd love for you guys to meet her. Her name's Sima. So nice we have thing. Zadi and Sima. I mean, that's, that's kind of cool. And uh, yeah. Sounds you good. Guys love. What, do you, what do you say, Brian? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> He's just like, whatever. He's like, let's do it. He's ready to go to Camp Pendleton. I'm downtown. i got to get to Union Station. All right. <laughs> let's go. You know what nobody knows is that uh, Brian... Oh, are we offline? No, no, no. We're, we're still here. <laughs> I was going to say that Brian has been doing this entire show really impressively. Like We can see some of the operation going on. And he's uh, completely bottomless. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. From all the way at the uh, Epic Foo studio. I make him take <laughs> off his shirt and do push-ups afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's creepy. All right. Brian, uh, take okay. us home. See ya. Bye. 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 Now this is the funky music that plays over. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? That was fun. Oh, we Look, we, we went we over. We forgot to take questions or anything. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them if they can't take a joke. That's what I say.